A hyperlapse is basically a moving time lapse that creates this really sick and almost impossible looking movement that you've probably seen on a lot of travel videos and vlogs. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to shoot and edit a sick looking hyperlapse. First, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka, and I make weekly DaVinci Resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that'll help you become a better editor. So if you wanna level up your editing skills, click the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the newest videos put out. But let's get into it. The first thing that you need to shoot a hyperlapse is a location. Ideally, you want an open and flat space so that you can move around without any obstructions at all. You'll also need a location that is going to be the center of our hyperlapse. So it could be a building, a person, a statue, whatever you want it, it just has to be clearly defined because you'll need to be able to focus on one specific point of this object and move towards it. So the only equipment that you really need to shoot a hyperlapse is a camera and lens. If you have a wide angle lens, you should definitely use it because it's gonna give your hyperlapse that more dramatic, larger than life appearance. So to shoot a good hyperlapse, you need to make sure that you have the right camera settings. So you're gonna wanna enable your camera's guidelines. And also, if your camera has the option, enable the center marker. If your camera has a built-in camera level, then using this will help you so much. Just make sure that your camera is level and that your center point is fixed on that one place that you want it to be. Now for the picture quality. We're gonna have to do some editing to make this hyperlapse look good. So choose the largest picture size. You can either choose to shoot in JPEG, which is gonna be more space efficient, or RAW, which will take up more space. But by doing that, you're gonna be able to get the most quality. Just remember, if you shoot RAW, you're gonna have to use a program like Lightroom or some Lightroom alternative to edit the photos because you can't import the RAW photos into DaVinci Resolve. So once you've got the picture quality down, set your white balance properly, you don't want to keep it on auto white balance because over time, the lighting around you is going to change, you know, because the clouds move in front of the sun and then now everything's blue. So auto white balance will just mess everything up. Just make sure that you manually set your white balance to something like sunlight or cloudy or whatever. Now you need to map out your movement. Are you moving towards your subject? Are you moving away from it? Are you circling it or moving past it? If you've never done a hyperlapse before, the easiest way is to move towards it. Also, something you need to be aware of if your videos are 24 frames per second and let's say you want like a two second hyperlapse well that's going to be 48 photos if you're going to get something like a five second hyperlapse you'll have to take 120 photos and if that object is really close you'll have to take small steps towards it so you get that five second hyperlapse now in the same way if you want a five second hyperlapse and you have to shoot 120 photos but instead of having an object really close it's really far away you're going to have to have a few steps in between each picture. Now the process of actually shooting a hyperlapse is pretty simple. All you have to do is pick a point and place your center marker on it. Make sure that your camera is as level as possible. Then take the photo. Take a step forward. Take another photo. Step forward. Then keep doing it over and over and over again until your arms are shaking from holding your camera to your eye. And even then, Keep going because you don't wanna stop and lose your place. So once you've taken all the pictures for your hyperlapse, you're gonna go ahead and import them onto your computer. And if you shot raw, this is where you're gonna wanna edit your photos in Lightroom or some other Lightroom alternative and then export them as a JPEG. Now this is where the magic happens. I'm using DaVinci Resolve to create this hyperlapse, but the process is pretty much the same in every other software, give or take a few small differences and buttons and all of that stuff. If you want to try this effect out for yourself, you can get these photos for free in the link in the description below. But anyway, once you're in DaVinci Resolve or your editor of choice, the first thing that we actually have to do to create this hyperlapse is to import our pictures because, you know, you can't create a hyperlapse without the uh, the pictures. So find the pictures in your file browser and on some editing softwares, you're going to have to hit a checkbox that says import as image sequence. But DaVinci Resolve actually recognizes these as an image sequence. So all you gotta do is highlight everything and just drag them into our media pool like this. Now just drag them down onto your timeline and take a look at what we got. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's pretty horrible. But don't worry, we can fix it and make it look all smooth and stuff. 
So click on your hyperlapse and in the inspector tab right here, we're gonna go down to stabilization. Now we have a few options here under mode. We have perspective, similarity, and translation. Perspective mode stabilizes your perspective, panning, tilting, zooming, and rotation. So this is like the most advanced version of stabilization. The second one is similarity, and this enables the pan, tilt, zoom, and rotation. So this is like the second best, like if perspective messes up your footage, then try similarity. And the last one is translation, and this pretty much just enables your pan and tilt. So I really wouldn't use it because it's just not gonna do anything good. So for this hyperlapse, I'm just gonna go to perspective and leave everything exactly where it's at. And then make sure that zoom is enabled, then hit stabilize. So now if I go back to the beginning and I just watch it through, this is what I have. And it looks pretty great, but if you want it smoother, you can go over here and increase the smoothness a lot more and hit stabilize again. The trade-off with increasing smoothness is it's gonna zoom in more. The default settings for perspective should look pretty good though, because if you kept your center point on that one object when you were shooting, this should be just great. So after we made our hyperlapse look smooth and stable, we can actually reverse it if you want to. So if I want it to start all the way from here and go inwards, I can right click on the clip and go to change clip speed and then just hit reverse speed right here and hit change. So now it's gonna start far away and go all the way towards the building. But you know, there's just one thing that's missing out of this hyperlapse and that's motion blur. So to add that in, we're gonna go to our color tab. Now in the color tab, if you've already done a color grade on this first serial node, just hit Alt S and create a second one. But if you haven't done your color grade or you did it in Lightroom, then just do it on this first serial node. So to get this cool zoom motion blur, we're gonna go down to the Windows tab right here and click on the circle mask. Now if you did your hyperlapse right and you focused on the one point, you literally don't have to track this circle. You can just place it and then move all the way back and you'll see that the center of this circle literally just stays exactly at that one point. So now in the open effects tab, I'm gonna grab zoom blur and put it on this serial node also. And obviously this is completely the opposite way. So down in the windows tab, we'll hit this reverse button. You'll see that it applies the blur outside of the mask, but it is way too strong. Now in our zoom blur settings, we're gonna change smooth strength from 0.400 to somewhere in between 0.200 and 0.300. Whatever looks really good in your opinion. Then go down to border type and change it from black to replicate. Now, under our softness in the Windows panel, we'll bring our mask softness up to about four or five percent, something like that. Now, if you watch it through all the way, you can just see that mm, it looks so good. All right, so now you know how to create a sick hyperlapse. If you thought this video was helpful, give it a like and also share it with your friends so that they can add this sick hyperlapse into their videos too. So I have a pretty fun idea for you guys. This week, if you go out and shoot a hyperlapse that looks super cool, send it to me. With your permission, I'll post some of them on my Instagram and shout you out. To do this, follow me on Instagram and send your hyperlapse to submissions at brmediaproduction.com. Anyways, if you want more videos like this, click on the top for a playlist with all of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials, or click on the bottom for a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, peace. peace.